Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to your final match of Group C. It is Mouse Sports facing off against Sweet and China. This one, this one's for pride. Both of these teams are 0-2 in the group, and a bit of a shocker. Mouse Sports has not managed to secure a win yet. Obviously, Empire, we his Asians, both teams that had a good shot at beating them. Empire, probably the favorites in this group, and I think for most people, we as Asians, just slightly below Mouse Sports in their predictions. But we as Asians beats Mouse, then they take care of business against SNC. Empire, same for them as well. Take care of business versus SNC, take down Mouse, and now they're in a position where both of those teams will advance. They are currently fighting to see who's going to be the one seed, the high position coming out of this group. Actually pretty important because the second place team in either Group C or D will be playing uh, against Navi. One of those two second place teams has to face them. So if you're playing Navi in round one of the quarterfinals, that is probably going to be your team getting knocked out of the tournament. At least many would expect it might be. So Mass Sports playing for Pride. Same for Sweet and China as well. The BYOC upstarts who have been fairly impressive today. And Mass Sports, well, they're up to some interesting tricks here. It looks like uh, a Bambo. No, sorry, not sorry, not Bambo. What am I thinking about? He plays for AL now. Uh, but they're going to go for the Pudge. I believe it's Black who plays the Pudge for them. So I guess a safe lane Pudge, getting that early farm. TA, probably to be handled by Fata, going solo mid. And it looks like the Poss Shadow Shaman, one of their preferred support heroes. Uh, or sorry, uh, God, I, I, this new roster is throwing me for a loop. I think I'm confusing Poss with... Uh, Oh, with Alex. I can never keep them straight. Yeah, sorry. It looks, it looks like it is an Alex, an Alex Shadow Shaman. Poss, uh, I believe he's the offlane. Kuroki, that secondary support, the four position for Mouse. Trying to brush up on my EU Dota. It has been a while. But, yep, it looks to be a Fata TA, uh, a Black Pudge, and then an Alex Shadow Shaman. The all-German roster now, pretty much, for the squad. And let's see how they do. At this point, just playing to try to pr impress the sponsors and... Let them know that they may not have represented them as well as they would like at this event, but they still have some fight. They still have some spirit in themselves. An aggressive draft in Sweet and China, they get quite a few heroes that can be effective against heroes like TA and Pudge. We're well into the draft. Very quick draft developing. Darkseer, Jakiro, Sven for Sweet and China. This is uh, this is Krill Crawl, who should be playing the Sven. He's been the stand-in for this squad. Creaty has been their solo mid player so far. And look at all the counter initiation they've banned out. Banned out Mag and the first two bands. Smart band there. Actually, something I was talking about in the pregame chat was they were sort of wondering what my thoughts were just as an observer about the drafts. And I said, well, Magnetar, pretty good hero. Most people would agree. And he is banned out, which uh, wouldn't necessarily be as potent the way this draft is developed, but always going to be a pain in the ass. So it won't be there. Instead, they're going to go for the Windrunner for Poss. That'll be the offlane. Pass, Poss, Poos. I'm not sure. We'll say pass. But uh, yeah, he'll be the offlane wind runner. We're going to have a solo mid TA for Fata. The lane's pretty well set at this point. Now just looking likely for Kuroki's hero for that secondary support hero. On the side of SNC, they get their hands on a hero that we has Asian banned out last time. It's the Enigma for them. It is a big death ball, a big press R win fight kind of lineup for this squad if you're using grid hockeys. This is a lot of AoE. This is a lot of lockdown. And I gotta say, I like their draft quite a bit. Darkseer versus Windrunner. If we get the two the two solos matching up against each other, do fine. Darkseer in the offlane versus a Pudge plus Shadow Shaman. Should do okay. Iron Shell, very annoying for Pudge. You can trade blows favorably with Shadow Shaman. So if they throw Darkseer into that suicide lane, he'll be fine. Even if he's up against multiple heroes, the Shadow Shaman Pudge plus one. Well, now it might be a little bit tougher with Shadow Demon as well. I think what they should do is honestly just abandon the jungle. Uh, abandon the suicide lane. Throw Darkseer into the jungle. It's something they did not do in their first match. And it ended up costing them. And we'll see how they ad adapt. It really depends on how Mouse choose to lane this. Uh, they don't really have much of an aggressive tri lane. Shadow Shaman and Pudge not really good in that situation. So pretty much it could be a Pudge solo mid, a TA safe lane solo, and then a tri lane with the other three. But most likely, the lanes will be what we talked about earlier. And Kriati going to get that Invoker, so he will be playing the solo mid position. He'll be handling the Invoker for this one. Should be interesting. Fata as the TA, heading towards that mid lane. Bottle Prepare rush for him. For Alex on the Shadow Shaman. He'll be playing the support role, to be expected. Kuroki on that other support. He'll be handling the Shadow Demon. Disruption already picked up Black on the Pudge. Should be our tri lane here those three heroes and black pudge pretty fearsome one of the better pudges outside of dandy uh, at least in europe he's been he's been pretty impressive pass 
on the Windrunner. Should go to the offlane. Maybe we won't, we won't see him enter there immediately, but at some point he'll show up. Once he feels it's safe to try and get some farm. For anyone who's tuned into my cast in the past, wondering why I'm not quite as verbose as I normally am. It is a long day of casting ahead of me. I am through Group C after this match, but still have Group D and the quarterfinals to follow. So, at least seven more matches after this, possibly eight or nine. You gotta preserve that voice. Uh, so for those who are hoping for screaming for excitement, I'm sorry, but I have to I have to pace myself through this one. But Dansk will be our offlane darks here. Observer's already picked up. Creaty as the Solomid Invoker. Fudgy on the Enigma. Uh, going for the Exhort build. Going for some burst damage. Going for maybe a bit of split push later on. It does synergize nicely with Enigma. Forge Spirits and the Demonic Conversions. Plus you've got Twin Headed Dragon. I think this is a smart game the to go and begins. Exhort. Sunstrike, not really going to be a big factor. But what will be is the push power come mid game. Regeneration. And Darkseer picks up a, <laughs> a regen that immediately Kuroki throwing out some harass. Just not much a Shadow Demon can do to a Darkseer by himself. <laughs> Look at that. That's with the illusions to getting a couple of auto attacks off. It's just not going to happen. Also, the Forge Spear is very good against the hero like TA and against Pudge. Exhort builds generally stronger against the TA, and, well, Solomid Evoker is a bit vulnerable to ganks. You can already see Mouse thinking about this. Poss, it's before that 50 second mark, it's before he actually needs to stack the creep, so he was going to venture to that middle lane, see if he could pick up a first blood. Not able to do so, but we'll just see him do a lot of pulling. They're going to go for the double pulls, the Shadow Demon. Uh, we'll have to see where he goes. Might just roam around. Looks like that's the way he wants to start this off. The rest of SNC, Lavexus on the Twin-Headed Dragon, Krill Crawl on the Sven. Fudgy on the Enigma, and I already mentioned Creatine on the Invoker. So, I gotta say, for those who haven't watched this team, just sort of curious to see who the last team in, in Group C is, they have looked pretty impressive even in defeat. They have haven't quite been up to the level of We Has Asians or, or Empire, but especially in their first match versus Empire, they were ahead for the first five to eight minutes of the game. And it was against Empire picking really, you know, what Empire always does, really aggressive heroes in the laning stage. They made a few key errors in, as far as strategy goes, and it cost them. But this is a team who maybe not at this tournament, but in future events, could be kind of a dark horse. I was impressed by what I saw. They seem very well-mannered and thoughtful and, you know, generally have the right attitude that you need. If you're an up-and-coming team, can't be arrogant, always have to be looking to improve, trying to understand what you're doing wrong. And they definitely have the mental game down pat, at least from what my interactions with them looked like. Meanwhile, top lane, it's a bit of a wild goose chase onto Dansk, who just wants to get a little experience. This is not really how I would have landed. I really think you're much better off just starting in the jungle, get Iron Shell level 1. You can even do the mid pulls. He is going to look to pick up a haste turn, and that will allow him to escape, I believe. Yep, should be okay. Really better off just jungling. Do the mid pulls if you'd like. Do the mid pulls if you'd like. Yeah, there you go. And then you can also do the secondary pulls. So by going for surge first, sure, he's less likely to die, but he also can't get any experience in lane. So this is a str another strategic blunder. As far as the Darkseer goes, not getting anything. Whereas if you look at Mouse, they are getting something. Poss already level 2, Shadow Demon not getting that much, but Alex level 2. Both of the supports doing a lot of pulling. I mean, as a, as he's a hero who doesn't need much. Honestly, you get to level 2, you'd like to get more, but you're still going to be pretty effective. Shadow Shaman, Windrunner, they need a lot more, so that's why we see Kuroki roaming around more than anyone else. Taking basically the sacrifice for the team. The one here who hasn't been touched is going to be the free farm Sven bottom. He is getting a lot of gold, a lot of experience, already hitting level 3. Actually, not as much experience as I would think, but they're going to go for... Hmm. It's a bit early to push. Yeah, they're just stacking, not actually going to commit to anything. And so far, just a very passive opening to this game. It's, uh, it's a game where you might expect the teams to have some fun, take some risks, but as far as gold goes, dead even. As far as experience goes, a tiny lead for SNC, but nothing significant. And remember, they do have the Enigma. They would be, they would actually be quite far ahead if Darkseer was jungling. Instead, he's level, he still doesn't have a creep. Oh boy. Honestly, he needs to go, he needs to go to another lane and just steal experience. Either do the mid pulls. Like, this is just not- this is not happening. <laughs> you need Iron Shell to farm. He's gonna block the pull camp. Uh, we'll have to see if Mouse D-Ward this one. They do have a lane ward. I attack. don't know if they saw him come here. Depends if they're paying attention. Looks like they might have. Oh, Alex, you're cruel. If he goes to D-Ward that, he is a cruel mistress. Dyer's no, he's gone to check the rune. Okay, attack. here we go. 
Has the shackle. He's gonna drive the Darkseer back. Dyer's but actually, the, the rune is bottom lane. And pushing bottom lane this early, bit of a blunder from SNC. You don't want to push the lane this early at level 4. Because when you push, you're only getting the tier 1. And then that just opens up the lane Dyer's for Windrunner to farm safely. Much better off, wait until the Enigma Dyer's hits level 5 or 6. Wait until your Sven's got more points of Warcry. Wait until Jakira's maybe got a point in Liquid Fire. Uh, speaking of Jakira, he is going for dual breath. Uh, but by pushing this early, you're actually going to give a lot away. And Black finds the first blood top. Thanks. Even. Still no experience. Still not a single creep. The tower, the wave was pushing towards the tower. But Black was there. That safe lane pudge getting rolling. And that's going to be a bit of trouble for SNC. This is. They do have some good lockdown for pudge. So it's not as though all hope, help, hope is lost. It's not like they have five squishy casters who are just going to melt to him. But they, they have a lineup where Darkseer is a big component of how they deal with the Pudge. And so far, not able to do so. You can see what happens when you push that bottom tier 1 too early. Now Posh just gets tons of experience, tons of levels. Really something you want to save for later on. Fudgy doing some farming in the jungle up to level 5. He is farming pretty well. Has gone for the level 3 Malefus. Going for a little bit more aggressive of a build. Radiant Surging away his Darkseer. Is Black attack. thinking about a hook. If it was level 4, would throw it there. But doesn't quite have the range he needs. Just barely. Actually, he might be able to catch up Ice Pat this year. And that will put an end to the aggression for the moment. Radiant's top tower is under attack. Top lane. Sunstrike actually missing. It looks like a hook was attempted. Now Kuroki trying to defensively disrupt. Well... He is only level 3. The tower is low. This will be denied. So, a bit of a victory for SNC. Windrunner doing the best thing in this case. Push that lane hard. Get the momentum Radiant's going the other way. Try and punish the denied. absence of the Radiant Heroes Radiant's from your lane. Fata, same for him as well. Meanwhile, top lane though. It's a dismember. It's dank. He gets caught and brought down again. If he was just jungling, he'd already be level 4 or 5. No problem. Even doing the mid pulls. Uh, being darks here, you can just farm the stack camps very easily. Uh, and you can put the Iron Shell on the creep, so you can even stack this camp and then look to farm it. Instead, he's only level 2. He's got nothing. And Radiant's this is a game where Darkseer might just die over and over without having items. In comes an Angry Fanta. And Kriati, with the early point Wex, will be okay. It's still, an e it's still a bit of a victory, even if you don't get the kill, though. Because you waste tons of mana from the Invoker. It costs 20 for the Invoke, another 200 for the Ghost Walk, and the cooldown is blown. Which means he's going to need some help, especially while the Hastern lives, and that's what we see. Twin-headed dragons mid. Again, Sven still, for the most part, just being left to farm. Although, with that, this is the other weakness of that push. And, you know, something I would have talked about if we had more time is when you're pushing the lane, you're missing some creeps because you're fighting under their tower, so it's harder to last hit. You're also just spamming all your abilities to bring them down quickly. Plus, he TP top. So for both of those reasons, he's a bit behind. Fudgy, still not level 6, needs a couple creeps to get it. Oh boy. Fortunately, the demonic conversion's very potent in their own right. Black hole there would have been huge. Could have been an easy double kill. And an important one as well. The struggles, the woes for Danks, they continue. Sure, you can push the lane with Ancho, you can get some levels, or some, some gold, but you can't really get experience, and Black has the scent. If you stop to surge, that's where the hook comes. You gotta keep on walking, but you can't, because Pudge has the arcade boots. He's faster. He is slowly, actually he's slower, but for some reason he's gaining. Oh, the trap gets detonated now, disrupted, and soon to die. Very soon to die. And down he goes. Now Alex, well, still only level 4. Bit under leveled because they also pushed the tower early. Didn't continue with the pulls. Once he has the wards, though, they can, with Pudge and wards, it's actually a really strong pushing combo. You drop the wards, the threat of Pudge charging in, you have to basically back up, give up the tower. They don't have Illuminate. They don't have really long-range counter-pushing. They do have a Twin-Headed Dragon, and he helps. But not quite enough, especially when he's underleveled. Now the gold graph. It begins to spike the Wave Mouse, showing that sort of veteran savvy. Sitting a bit above 2k gold advantage, and more importantly, a bit above 2k experience advantage. Now Black... Once again, no hesitation, fires and delivers, and the death of our Darkseer. Uh, a little frustrating to see this happen again. 
Uh, he's, I'm sure for him, because he's had the same issue in game number one. Uh, his first group stage match against Empire, same thing happened to the offlane darks here. Now Sven getting caught out, but a nice ice path will allow him to survive the illusion skipping chase. He will barely live. Let's see what Evoker goes for. He's only seven, hasn't gone for the Midas Rush. Not quite as high level as you would hope for. Has been a bit on the back foot bottom lane. Shakira going in, defensive disruption. Will this Kuroki die? He is trying to run away, he will fall. Now the Courier comes in. This will be a huge steal from Poss. The Sunstrike is gonna miss, and he's gonna escape. Oh boy, what a play from him. Now into Kriati. Big tower dive from Fata, bringing Kriati low. Not able to kill him off. Meanwhile, top lane, it's black. The Pud Show is getting started, and it's starting to feel like SNC are going to be the lemmings in this game. Constantly walking into their demise. Unable to dodge the hooks, unable really to have enough impact. The jungle Enigma left the jungle early, but we're seeing the downside of that now. Not as much of an impact later on in the game because he's a bit underleveled. He's at level 8, he's not doing poorly by any means, but just not really able to find the right engagements, the right openings for him. Invoker, weak in the laning stage. It's been punished for Mouse. The early smoke ganks, or not the, not even smoke ganks, just the early rotations in mid from the Shadow Demon. Everything Mouse is doing is exactly Radiant's how you counter the lineup that has SNC has. And SNC just not able to make the proper adjustments. In comes the TP, Lavexus on the Jakiro. Getting caught by trap number one. Here comes Black, looking for the hook. Kuroki is going to disrupt him. Soul Catcher to follow. Kuroki will pay for his insolence, though. He drops very quickly. Now Lovex is big black hole and the Sunstrike bringing everyone low. But the wards get dropped. The meter as well. Black dropping low. Black trying to run away. One auto attack, and he will be brought down. Nice job there by Danks. And Fata getting caught out. Mouse really overextending. Buyback from Kuroki, I believe. Yep, he bought back. Plus Shackle shot on two. In comes Paz in the back lines. Darks here. Disrupted the counter to that early game surge, just not able to do anything. And after a great black hole, a really nice macro fire, it just wasn't enough. Mouse, too far ahead in items, too far ahead in levels. And the other big thing is they have the tier one, so they can buy back and get to the fight in time. Without that tier one, if it falls early, that doesn't happen. But it's power shot after a demonic purge, and he explodes. Creatine will fall. This is what Mouse needed to do. They weren't going to win the late game. They weren't going to win in the 5v5 clashes. That's pretty obvious when you have Darkseer, Enigma, and really, uh, even, uh, I mean, just so much AoE. Even an Exhort Invoker, quite an AoE king in his own right, with Meteor, Daphne Blast, uh, eventually your Ice Wall, potentially your Tornado. Black fishing for a hook, and he's going to land. What a hook by Black. He can be very impressive on this punch. Now the disruption in the end to that escape. Oh, what a power shot. So well timed by Paz. Actually fired that one before the disruption ends. Hook number two. Black canceling, canceling, canceling. And now firing and now missing. Hood gonna be, Hood is already up. Does drop his wand before using, uh, or wait, what did he drop there? Oh, dropped his arcane boots before using his wand. Just to get a little bit of extra mana out of those arcanes. It's the little things. Radiance bottom tower is under Not a crucial thing this game, but they add up. Do all those little things right, you're in a better position. Radiance Courier has respawned. Unfortunately, so too has Black found a new hook. Enigma will fall to this, and now Black moving forward, looking, fishing, as it were. You know, if you're fishing with a hook like this, I mean, this is a hook that's like bigger than the fish's body. It's not very subtle, right? You know, that's the one. In fishing, generally the hook is small, it's attached to bait. It's something appealing about it. There's nothing appealing about this punch hook. Like, why? Why would you ever? Oh, I want to get hooked. I want to. I want to go for that. <laughs> it just doesn't work that way. It's uh, it's a bit of a different kind of hook. Punch would not make a good fisherman, I gotta say. But he is fishing these heroes into play. Definitely blast on two. There's your combo from the invoker, and the wards actually limiting their routes to escape. It brings Black low. It does not kill him off. Sunstrike is going to miss. Black wants to go again. Hook will fly. Invoker will fall. Now, once again, Kuroki just continues to find himself way out in the front lines, tanking and almost serving as bait for his team because here comes Fada. One meld crit. Even with the, the Soul Catcher, just not quite enough. Now, a hook from Black. Could have been his doom, and now Fudgy sees a low black and wants back in. Black tries to TP. This might be trouble. He's got another hook. He does have nope. He doesn't have the mana for it. It is coming in. Malthus number three brings him down to 40 HP. Where's that vacuum? Where's that vacuum? Where is that vacuum? 
no vacuum. Blinky forward is the TA into a hook. And the Sunstrike brings him down to 10 HP. I can't scream. I can't scream. I must save my voice. But oh my god, that was a fantastic Sunstrike. <laughs> Unfortunately, they were just too clumped up. Hook? Really, Black? You're hooking that with 200 HP? Sto if Sven just storm bolts after that hook, you die. Black Dyer's feeling rather ballsy. Under Playing with borderline reckless abandon. Sunstrike narrowly gonna miss. But almost catching him out. And, well, here comes the Radiant Dyer's team trying to group up, trying to siege fall. a tower. Remember, they do have a team that at some point in this game, they just have to win one fight to turn things around. That's the kind of team fight, that's the kind of death ball they have. There's just nothing Mouse can do to contest it. If you try to initiate, you will be countered by all their AoE, by all their team fight. At a certain point in this game, the hook finally thrown. In comes the TA. This is your frontline tank. Not really what she's meant for, though, and she is burning in a hurry. Disruption. Will it be enough? The Sunstrike bringing Fawn to low. Wand's almost back up to full. Actually, that was a mech as well as a wand. Hook to fly. Won't connect. In comes Krill Crawl. Did use the God's Strength, but not really able to connect with any of these heroes. They have some ways to kite them. The biggest one is the Demonic Purge. They also have Shackle. They have Dismember. Mouse have their options for now. Later on, eventually, once SNC get their items, their levels up, those options won't be there. But it's still a long way before they get those items. Before they get those levels. I mean, look at the Darkseer. He's got Power Treads. This is never an item you want to see on your Darkseer. This is, I'm so poor, I'm so underleveled, I'm just going to buy literally... The only thing I could afford that gives me HP and does something else for me as well. Just gives me a little bit of move speed. Radiance bottom tower is under attack. Massport's looking to at least pick up one win in this group stage. Although they are officially out of contention. It's about pride. It's about self-respect for these guys. Can they close Radiance the deal? They are pretty far ahead. Everything fallen. looks good for them. But it is a hard team to push into for SNC. You try to force a fight, all of a sudden, Ice Path hits, Stormbolt to follow, Vacuum can be there, and the Black Hole on top of it. It is potentially devastating, but this is your Siege Cannon. This is sort of your ball breaker, is the Pudge. The Pudge Hook can really put an end to these Turling lineups if the hooks are on point. Now Thanks will get caught. Shackle number one doesn't actually latch, but the other Shackle, it'll be there. Now the Disruption trying to keep Fata alive. In fact, he's going to man up. He's going to go back in. Trap on two. Detonating. Blinking forward. Wants the spend. Ice path to stop him. Now Fudgy. Black hole, but no mana to cast it. Needs that blink. Desperately needs that blink. Because Darkseer is so underleveled, he can't be the frontline initiator he normally would be. If you surge in, you get hexed. Bottom tower is under you don't have a max vacuum. The AoE just Radiant's not big enough at this point. Has Can't really pull them in from long range, so you're forced to getting close, and that's where you get hexed, you get shackled, and you die. Sometimes it can be spent in the front lines, but he is desperately under farm. Only the Ogre Club treads up for him. No BKB in sight. SNC have a wonderful team fight on paper. Their composition unstoppable in a 5v5 clash on paper. But Dota is not played on paper. It is played inside of Valve servers, and unfortunately, uh, they just—they don't—they're not where they need to be to be able to take these fights. Boy, fresh mate. Roshan has Simply fallen to the dial forever. Four staff now up in black, along with the hood. Didn't go back for the pipe. Going for this more aggressive item, and that's why Let's four staff in the hook. This was spotted by a trap. Nice little combo there. And that's a ghost walk. Do they actually have detection? Now they do have dust on the Shadow Demon, but he's quite far behind. Now blinky forward into the hex. Alex already with the blink. This is the advantage of getting those early towers on your Shadow Shop. And where is that demonic purge? Who was it used on? I don't think it was used on Sven. That could cause some trouble, but where is the black hole? Pass immediately canceled. Just not able to find the correct openings now. Crow Crawl forced to run away. Fata looking to give chase. One by one, they all fall down. Four heroes about to die. Four stepping forward is black. On onwards and upwards for Mouse, who look to be in prime position to at least get a single win in this group stage. They struggled against Empire. They struggled against We Has Asians. But they are basically at a point now where they shouldn't be able to lose. Poppy to celebra celebratory smoke under the enemy tier one. Tier three, rather. Looking to get their first set of racks. Wards are up for Alex. 
Might even save them for another lane. Bottom Rex. Bottom tier 3 is exposed. They could rotate down there. And SNC, mercifully, they will be tapping out. So there won't be... There might not be Fountain Hooks all game. SNC, they know they've been having a tough time in the group stage. But no shame in that. It's been... It's a pretty strong group. This is... I would say the second strongest group overall as far as depth goes. I think Group D just a tiny bit stronger. YOLO start, don't work against maps. I will, I gotta admire these guys for having some, some good, for having some fun even when they're getting pretty much hammered by mouse uh, from start to finish. And again, this is hammering number three. It comes after two others. Radiant's middle barracks has fallen. Board's getting plopped down. Disruption on black. Just sort of delaying the inevitable. In comes all the disconnected heroes. Hero Jakiro wants one last shot. Macro Pyre, they're fighting it. They are taking some good damage, but giving back as good as they get. Black is just unkillable at this point. Can anyone bring him down? The answer is no. Maybe Kuroki. Nope. Nope. <laughs> oh, he four steps away. He will barely survive. Now five heroes disconnected. The end officially in sight. This will bring an end. To the runs for both of these teams in DreamHack Winter 2012. This also concludes our action for Group C. Empire, as well as We Has Asians, will be the two teams to advance out of this group. Mouse Sports, they finish one and three, one and two. They finish in third place. It will be SNC, your BYOC team. Unfortunately, despite some good showings, especially against Empire, just not able to put a win on the board. Certainly not able to, to threaten to take one of those top two spots. Mouse Sports, a bit of a surprise at this event. Uh, you know, they've had a lot of roster changes. They've had a lot of sponsor changes. I know Sing Sing has questioned their dedication, said they don't practice enough to his liking. And, well, for whatever reason, they just didn't have it here today. It will be Mouse Sports and SNC going home. We has Asians as well as Empire will be advancing. Thank you all for tuning in. I'm LT, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube.com slash LD Dota. If you enjoy my casting, be sure to follow me. More importantly, though, check out the live stream for the main event, twitch.tv slash DreamHackDota, where Beyond the Summit's very own Gods is going to be casting there all day long, along with Draskal, uh, Toby Wan, as well as 2GD. They are doing a great job. I heard Wagamama was even filling in as a caster, so hopefully as teams get knocked out or have some downtime, we'll be seeing even more of that on the live stream, on the main event stream. But for now, that wraps up for Group C action. Stay tuned. We have a lot more coming your way. Group D to follow. That should be exciting. A lot of interesting matchups there. And then the big one. That's going to be your quarterfinal action. At least seven more matches of Dota. Possibly nine to follow. I'm hanging in there, guys. Thank you all for joining me. This will be a wild ride and a very long day. Stay tuned for more action coming soon.